this is part two of our little uh, sequence of tips and tricks where we're going to create this little uh, woodland scene here. We've already created our ecosystem layers, the basic setup, which we'll tweak later in the, in the series. You can see Steve is diligently waiting for us in, in this little patch of ferns. And in this uh, tips and tricks video, we're going to look at importing this uh, trunk uh, and how we're going to work with it. So let's get on with the scene. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new layer and click on the title of the layer to ensure that my imported asset ends up on that layer. So I'm going to just go look for it. It's in my favorites. There it is. So double click. Now, this uh, particular asset was acquired from uh, Sketchfab. It's a free download. Um, you'll see below um, the address of the, the, the chap I uh, acquired the asset from. Uh, his name is, and I'm just trying to find it, oh, Jeffrey Marshall. He's got a, he's got a fantastic range of, of items. Um, I would always advocate... Um, crediting anybody who creates free assets because uh, without them we would be stuck for things to use in our scenes so i've already pre pre prepared this this will ship as if i remember correctly an obj with associated uh, maps necessary for a, a pbr kind of setup uh, i'm just going to reduce the scale of this to suit my scene I want it partially underground. Let's just move it into the scene a little bit further. Still a little bit large. I don't know what size I want it to be. So I'm just doing this manually for now. Uh, obviously, if you have a specific dimension in, in mind, uh, you can type it in up here. So we can input the length, the overall length and height of the item. So there it is. It's in the scene. So to work on it further, uh, it's a little bit cluttered at the moment. Steve's in the way. Um, the plane that we created previously with the ecosystems is in the way. So I've just moved Steve down onto the same layer as the plane. And I'm going to make that plane invisible so I can see what I'm working with. It also gives me an opportunity to fine tune the positioning of the trunk. We may want to think about rotating it to get it a little bit closer to our original concept. So you can see here in the preview, I have render dynamic ecosystems switched on. Just going to untick that. And I'm going to click here in between the plus and the name Steve um, just to hide him from the render. And I'm going to hide the plane from the render as well so that everything proceeds more quickly. We can unclick that later when we're happy. So let's have a look at the trunk material. As I say, it ships in as an OBJ, if I remember correctly. So we have our diffuse or, or um, texture map or uh, albedo, as it's known in, in other areas. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to edit this. Because at the moment it's just a trunk you know don't get me wrong it's a it's a nice item you can see i've set up the um normal and the displacement let's zoom in a little bit more so you can see so we end up with the normal as a projected texture which needs to be connected to the rgb to normal node which we can find in the math section in vector operations and it's down here towards the bottom Okay, RGB to normal. Then we connect that through to the normal output, which we will have to locate from the output menu, which is, I'm scooting up and down, there it is. It's grayed out at the moment because it's already loaded. And you'll also notice that I have the displacement um, direction node turned on. The normal will determine where the displaced map you know, the direction in which the displacement occurs. What we're going to look at is adding an alpha layer. Okay, so we're going to add a new layer. So we're going to go back. We're going to add a layer. 
and you'll see from the preview that nothing happens for some bizarre reason. It's supposed to be grey. Let's just boost that up so we can see what's going on. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into this uh, particular layer because at the moment the alpha is switched on. As we can see, the alpha is connected to the projected texture. We don't want that, so I'm going to just click on the link and delete it. What I'm going to add is I'm going to um, add a alpha map, which is just going to be a simple fractal. I like to start with simple fractals and, and then build upon that where I, I need to connect it through. And remember what the alpha is doing is it's looking at uh, the, the fractal in terms of a grayscale image. So where it's white, it will be transparent and where it's black, it will be visible. So that's our alpha sorted out. Um, and in actuality, for some reason, it's carried through the projected texture map. I don't need that because we're going to set up a color map for this. So again, whilst I'm here, I'll set up the color map, which is going to be based on a grainy fractal. I like to attach a filter to this because it enables further editing late further down the line. And then we'll add a color map. OK, so let's zoom out and see how we're going to connect these. Connect the color to the color map. Connect the color map to the filter. Connect the filter to the simple to the grainy fractal. So you can see already in the preview, if I drop the, down the preview here, we can see we've already got some texture going on. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to load a color map and I'm going to load this foliage. Then I'm going to right click and edit because that black is too black. You can see we're getting potch, patchy algae stroke moss coming through. I'm going to change that to a green. Which is better not quite so in your face but what I'm also going to do is on the alpha I'm going to look at creating kind of a, a streaky effect simply by changing the function in the X and Y to 0 0.5 that means the color is stretching vertically down so go back to our new layer check everything's okay and we'll just do a quick preview render to see what we've got so remember we've switched off the rendering of Steve and our um, ecosystem plane this is taking a little while to prepare because there is displacement on the trunk and there it is okay let's just go back in a second and have a look at a couple of things there's the bumps what we want is our new material, for some reason, has already got the normal map from the underlying layer carried through. That shouldn't be there, to be fair. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to delete that. We don't need to overload the scene with more and more large-scale images. All we need to do is replace the bump of this layer and add it to the previous layer. So we'll see all of the details coming through from the layer below. It's also a little bit too colorful for my liking. So I'm going to desaturate it a little bit and make it a little bit darker. That's much better. OK, so again, a preview render. So there we have our log. It's a little bit more weathered. It's a little bit more dirty. We can go on and tweak this further and further as much as you like, but for the moment, that's fine. What I really want, though, is if we refer back to our original image, is I want to get some mushrooms growing in this area, i.e. where the wood is rotten and exposed, the interior. Um, I find in most images, detail is key. The more detail, the better. So I'm going to zoom in on the plan view, the, the bird's eye view, if you want to call it that. And I'm going to set up a global ecosystem. 
So we're going to open up the Eco Painter. Make sure that this is ticked because this ensures that the uh, instances will only populate on this trunk. And we're going to add some instances. So it's the same way as we set up any other uh, ecosystem. And we can do a multiple selection again. We don't want the log, so we'll get rid of that. What we want are the mushrooms. So I click on one, press control, click, click, and tick. They've been added to the ecosystem. So we'll check a few of these settings and we'll check that we can paint to a sensible scale. Make sure your brush size is not too large because I need to get into these nooks and crannies down here. So let's just check our brush size. That's OK. And all we're going to do is we're going to paint directly into the areas we want our mushrooms to appear. Okay, so we'll scoot along. Maybe better at this end to increase the size of the brush a little bit. And we'll paint on our mushrooms into the rotten area of the trunk. A few more. We'll do a quick test render, see how that looks. Okay, so the mushrooms are in place, we can see down here. So we can close this dialog box. And we can ensure that the global ecosystem moves down to the same layer. Remember, this is all about minimizing the impact on system resources. So if we do a quick preview render of all of the items in place, you can see Steve's back. God bless him. We seem to have a little gap here. So I'm just going to increase the size of the plane just a wee bit in this axis. There we go. That's better. Let's do a quick preview render and see what we end up with. So the trunk's in place, but we, we seem to have far too many ferns. So all we're going to do is go back to the original plane, edit that material. We're going to get the fern layer. Remember, we named all the layers to make life easy. And let's look at increasing the amount of space in between the ferns. Let's just populate that. Okay, so we still seem to be having a fern intruding. So what we're going to do is we're going to make sure we've got decay near foreign objects ticked. And we'll try another populate. So you can see now we've got a big empty area. We may need to reduce the, the um, influence a little bit. That's better. Switch it back to dynamic population and do a preview render. OK, so we can see we've got a nice population of ferns. We've got our small plants coming through, the mushrooms coming through. Um, also some sticks scattered around. And Steve, we don't need Steve anymore, but I'm going to leave him in the scene. I'm just going to make him so he doesn't render. So we can see that without a human being in place for scale, because we're quite happy with the scale at this point. And OK. So next video, we will look at final tweaking of our ecosystems and how to set up our dappled sunlight. I hope you found that useful. Please remember to check us out on social media and YouTube. Give us some feedback. We're always interested to hear what people have got to say. If you've got any suggestions on future uh, tips and tricks videos from Eon Software. Thank you very much. Bye bye.